I'm about to show you something pretty amazing, I think. It's the musical equivalent of a fractal, the mathematical concept often represented in geometric art that explores recursion and self-reference. So this kind of uh, crappy synth sound is playing the first four measures of Smash Mouth's All-Star. If we look at the piano roll, we see that it's actually made up of MIDI data comprising 16,515 individual notes whizzing by at thousands of notes per second. We can zoom in closer, so to speak, using this feature in Ableton Live, which lets you have the tempo of a MIDI clip. So now let's listen to this, but exponentially slower every time. So yes, you heard that correctly. This version of Smash Mouth's All-Star yields Smash Mouth's All-Star when it's slowed down to about 1,000 times the original speed. How did I put this together, and why does it work? Well, before we get into it, I strongly recommend that you watch this video, my video on harmonic polyrhythms. In a nutshell, that video argues that one, since notes in the major scale relate to one another by simple pitch frequency ratios, two, since polyrhythms are also measured in simple ratios, three, when you speed rhythm up, you get pitches, four, therefore, notes and melodies are just polyrhythms sped up really, really quickly. Are you with me so far? Well, there's gonna be some math involved explained by somebody who is not a mathematician, so you have been warned. Okay, so the first step here is to sequence the first couple bars of All Star in the piano roll. We will think of this full clip of notes as our basic rhythmic pulse. Now we're gonna reference this chart from Wikipedia of intervals and their corresponding pitch ratios. We'll use these to mark up the sheet music of All Star as a reference. So the first interval, as it's related back to the root, is a fifth. So it has a ratio of three to two. The next interval is a major third. So it has a ratio of five to four, etc., etc. Normally, these ratios describe pitch frequencies measured in hertz or cycles per second. Today, these ratios will describe all star frequencies. How many times your ear will hear the first four measures of all star by Smash Mouth per second? Yes, this is an actual thing that I spent a lot of time on. What am I doing with my life? Okay. Let's do it. We're gonna need to figure out how many all-star clips we need to cram in within a given amount of space so that our ear will hear it as one continuous note when we speed it up. So in order to do that, we're going to need to find whole number integers that relate to one another by the ratios that describe the frequencies that we mentioned beforehand. Now I'm sure there's some fancy math that we could do to calculate those integers, but the Wikipedia list that we were referencing earlier already has them. 27 relates to 24 by a ratio of nine to eight, 30 relates to 24 by a ratio of five to four, etc., etc. So what we need to do now is lay out groups of all-star clips based upon the integer that relates to each individual note from the melody. So the first note is the root, so it will get 24 all-star clips. The next note is the fifth, so it will get 36 all-star clips. So in order for these to be ratios of frequency, they need to occur in the same amount of time. They have to have the rhythmic ratio of 36 to 24 or three to two. Fortunately, Ableton Live makes this really easy to program. It would be fairly complicated otherwise. All I have to do is consolidate these clips using Control J, select the notes using Control A, and then drag the notes over to fit 24 bars. This is 36 all-star clips being smushed within the span of 24, so now the rhythmic ratio is three to two. If we listen to the clip for the second note, the fifth, we now hear that the all-star melody is going a little bit faster than the first one. If we were to write out this process in standard notation, it would look like this, which is fairly complicated, but it is possible to do this without Ableton Live's nifty feature. So we're basically gonna go through this process with every single individual note from All Star. The next note is the third in the key, so it will get 30 All Star clips. The next note is the third again, so let's just copy and paste that. However, it's twice the length of the preceding notes. It's a quarter note in the melody, so let's double the entire thing so it'll take longer when we actually speed it up. We're basically just gonna keep doing this. Referencing back and forth to the table and the sheet music is actually a really straightforward process. Soon we'll have fractalized the entire melody. Let's listen to it, and then let's start slowly speeding it up so that we'll hear it more and more as it pitch.
The ramifications of this, I think, are pretty interesting because you could conceivably make any melody by sequencing versions of itself to generate itself. This sort of self-reference and recursion is explored quite heavily in Douglas Hofstetter's book Gödel Escher Bach, and I really strongly recommend that book if you found this video at all interesting. I got the idea for this video from a Reddit thread where somebody suggested that this might be possible, like a musical quine. A quine, by the way, is a bit of computer code which generates its own source code as its only output. Well, it turns out it is possible and something that I think is quite cool. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. My name is Adam Neely. I have a new video coming out every Monday, so if you like what you're watching here, please consider commenting, liking, and subscribing. I do regular Q&A videos, so I do read through all the comments, and there's been a lot of really awesome comments recently, so thank you so much for any, every, anybody and everybody who has commented. Um, also consider definitely clicking the ringy button because I do occasionally post videos throughout the week at different times other than Monday, like gig vlogs and uh, recently I posted a all-star meme. Shame on me for that, but <laughs> there we go. Um, if you really like what I do, please consider joining my Patreon because it's through the very, very generous patrons over on my Patreon that I am able to do these videos consistently week after week and afford the time and energy to put in to all the research and all the editing and all that stuff. So thank you very much if you're like these awesome, awesome people um, for subscribing to my Patreon. Uh, thank you so much for that. Anyway. By the way, I've included the MIDI clip from this video in the description, just in case anybody wants to, I don't know, check if I was making this whole thing up. Uh, you just load it up into some sort of digital audio workstation, throw some sort of synthesizer or piano patch on there, and then go to town. And you'll see for yourself that yes, it does yield All-Star when it's sped up. Until next time, everybody. Bass. All-Star when it's slowed down to about 1,000 times the original speed when it slowed down to about 2,000 times the original speed, when it slowed down to about 4,000 times the original speed. <laughs> uh, so I actually haven't done the calculations yet, so that just, <laughs> me just doing that kind of sounds like Job from Arrested Development. The worst that could happen is I could spill, spill some on my $3,000 suit. And the the $4,000 suit is holding the elevator, but the guy doesn't make that in three months. Oh, why don't I just take a win through this $5,000 suit? $6,300 suit. Come on! All right, hopefully it's 1,000, 2,000, or 4,000. We'll find out.